Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with my Princeton Project video uh, series. I have a Princeton Project that I'm working on. I'm trying to get all my American War of Independence models, terrain, scenario written, basically all the units ready to go uh, to be able to play with friends or at a convention or something, the Princeton uh, battle. Now, with the units that I make for Princeton, yeah, with the way I'm doing the unit composition for Princeton, I should be able to take those same units and repurpose them in other battles as well. All right, I made some good progress from the last video you see. Now, I've been making these videos about how I'm constructing these Sarissa buildings. I have a number of buildings here. I've got the house with chimney. I have a house with porch and chimney. And then I also have a plantation with porch and veranda, uh, as well as an American railed bridge. Uh, I've, done, I've done those four so far, and I still have a couple more. I've got the, the water mill that uh, it seems like if there's a way for me to get rid of this whole outer porch area, I will. If I have to cut that off or just not attach it, I will. I want just the water mill because of the way I want to put it on my map. And I also have a Renedra plastic model kit of an American church from 1750. So I'm going to uh, now. What's what's cool about this Renedra church, which I haven't done I haven't done a video on this yet, but what's kind of cool about this church is it has I don't know four feet or something. I'm gonna have to measure it, but it has a lot of wood fencing. It has just picket fencing out the wazoo, like three sprues of it, and uh, it's mainly for around the compound of the church. I'm sure, but I'm gonna use it. For everything, I'm just I'm going to mount them separately as terrain pieces that you can put on the table. So that was an awesome acquisition. I, I realized that I had a wagon right here. Uh, I made this a year ago, uh, and it's I made it for D and D. Really, I bought it and I said, you know what? That's a cool wagon. I just wanted to get it, and it's also a Sarissa model. But I'm gonna I'm gonna base this up and put a horse in front of it, or maybe an ox. Or something I'm gonna find out what I can do and then maybe put a rider inside there and uh, it's gonna be an American War of Independence maybe a British wagon because they've got some wagons and they've got some ammunition carts and stuff like that that they're taking from Princeton to Trenton when the Americans attack and I want that to be like a baggage train like an objective so we're gonna this will be one of the three or four pieces that'll be part of the objective. Maybe, I think I think that's what we're gonna do. Now I ordered a foreground medieval building. That's, that's nothing, but while I was ordering it, I decided to order some of their scatter. Uh, this scatter is really good scatter. It's, it's a great color, it's a great consistency, and it feels a lot like my Bosch scatter, almost exactly the same. It's, it, it's a, and, they call it foliage brown leaves. So these are leaves, but technically it's scatter. You get 10 grams in this bottle, right? For a higher price than 60 grams of the Bosch. I buy, I buy this is like 4.95 or something like that. I bought Bosch for, I think it was 2.75, three dollars something like that for 60 grams doesn't make sense this has a good color to it and I am gonna use it now that I bought it I've actually used it on these two skirmisher units just to see what it would look like and I used it on this bridge and it looks really good I, I like the look of it but it's not it's not like something to write home about it's overpriced in my opinion overpriced all right, now you can see on the screen right here, we've got a bunch of, these. I can still smell the primer because it hasn't dried yet, but I just primed a bunch of 
militia. I just built them today. Uh, these are my war games. Uh, I'm sorry, warlord games, militia models that you have to glue the arms and stuff on and the heads, as well as my old glory 25s. I've kind of intermixed them and I created my four militia units that I needed. The Chester Militia, the uh, three Pennsylvania Associators, and uh, so I got those three. And then in here also I have like the Pennsylvania Riflemen and the like hands, hands Rifles and Miles Rifles. So I've got them in there as well. So this is a bunch of my Continentals that I'm going to paint out my militia. I really do need a bunch of militia, so there you go. And then uh, I still haven't received my second shipment from Warlord Games. I received the first shipment and the third shipment, but I haven't received the second shipment. The first shipment was super small. The second shipment should have my spears in it. Uh, it should also have a box of uh, Continental Infantry and Militia. I'm not going to need that Militia box, but what I'm going to do with that Militia box, I've kind of decided. Uh, there's two Pennsylvania regiments that are Germans, and they're going to be mixed Continentals and Militia. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix them up uh, just to make that unit look a little bit more diversified, not all in uniform. Uh, where that's kind of what these guys are going to look like. So it's going to be a mix. I also just went ahead and pulled out the cannons that I already have finished for uh, the British, and I have one Continental cannon uh, finished. These I had finished before. I just wanted to show you, just add it to my complete completed list. Yeah, I'm going to show you some close-ups of all these guys so you get a chance to kind of see all of these models. But I did want to say that I got the black powder rules in and I've been kind of reviewing them. I've only got about halfway through, but mostly it's all, most of the rules, because uh, just the second half is like scenarios. Uh, there's a lot of pages for scenarios um, and special rules, but I think I've gotten pretty much all the rules. Maybe not. Yeah, I pretty much have gone through most of these rules, and there's really only a couple of minor changes to the rules. It's it's not a change in the rule. This this doesn't change this, the black powder rules. It clarifies some rules and it rewords it so that you can understand it better, and you can just as easily play with the old book and the new book. It's exactly the same. The only thing. That I've kind of noticed differently was the main thing that I noticed was the overall army general doesn't command a brigade. He gives a brigade commander a reroll uh, to allow him to succeed or fail. Uh, like let's say you uh, roll and you fail your roll, but you have the commander with you, you can re-roll it. And so your second roll, you might succeed. But let's say you succeed with the first roll, but only with like one success. And you want, and you need uh, two or three successes. And with that general there, it'll allow you to re-roll. You don't take the better of the two. You take the second one. If you re-roll it, you got to live with your results. So if you fail the second roll, then there was a miscommunication. So that's pretty cool. And there's a few other minor rules that I noticed as I was flipping through that I that I saw was different, but, uh, or it was, or I understood it differently. Maybe I should say it that way. Um, it said they changed the artillery rules for, for rockets. Guess what, I've never used rockets in this game, so that doesn't affect me really. And the way combat works, is uh, you can only get one unit on one unit per side. So if I've got a unit facing here and you charge me, you can only be uh, one unit against me in the front. Uh, but you can hit me from the sides. Uh, that's But that's kind of the way it was in the old rules. 
that was it. Except they used to say there was unit face, the unit sizes, if they would fit, you could have enough units in there. They don't say that anymore. What they now say is you pretty much have to be two sizes different. So if you are a large unit, then two, not medium, small units, two small units could hit you in the front. If you're, um, or tiny, I suppose. Well, tinies can't do can't even attack because they're always in skirmish skirmish but either way um yeah they changed like tiny units and irregular units are like always in skirmish and i don't remember there being irregular units in the old rules but i'm gonna have to go back and kind of take a look and see if there were and if not i don't care because they're in this um uh, yeah it seems like seems like it's easier to comprehend. It's going to be a lot smoother. We're just not going to be any debates on whether or not I've got two units against your one unit and this is what we need to roll. No, it's just your unit against my unit and we go. Okay, after counting my generals, it looks like I'm going to need 11 brigade generals. Uh, and I have like four generals on each side already painted but I just need to rebase them for this, but that's only gonna be four per side. I need to do about, what is that, nine, 10, 11, I'll, what, I'll only need to do two more? Wait, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, so what it looks like is I'm only gonna to need to, to do about three more generals, and then if I decide to make the overall commanders like Washington or something, then I'll need to do a couple more generals for their, for their aides. Um, they're, you know, the people riding with them. Uh, but other than that, it only looks like I'm going to be painting about five general models. All right, now these buildings aren't finished, but uh, because I want to paint the roofs and maybe the stonework and the brick work. But other than that, they're all glued together and, you know, they're great. Let's go ahead and take a close up look of the troops and the buildings. All right, these guys right here are my Pennsylvania lights. Oh yeah, I didn't mention this. I didn't mention this earlier, but I did switch to a one-inch metal washer to do the skirmishers. That's my Delaware lights, and I'm going to redo that flag. And this is Pennsylvania rifles. There's the wagon. There's the house. with porch and then that's the plantation maybe the Clark house that's what I'm thinking that's why I got it I was gonna use it as a Clark house yeah I'm using these guys I'm using like a one inch fender washer and I'm putting these guys on it so that the they don't tip over or fall over uh, when I did my Napoleonic figures, when I did my Napoleonic figures, I mounted them two per base so that I could form them up and used mixed formations. But in the American War of Independence, not really that. You're either a skirmisher or you're not. And because of the way these these bases are not metal, they would they would just fall over. Specifically, when they were on hills, you know, if they were on any kind of slope. They would just, they would have a tendency just to fall over. And that's why I wanted to make sure that I made it with metal. And so they, they're not going to fall over. That was the idea. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming out and checking out this uh, Princeton report. And I will see you later.